Hi, I'm Susie, and today I'm really excited because I'm doing my nail renovation video. Here is the before. Now, look at the after. A picture is worth a thousand words. What do you do when a client brings in a photo for inspiration? I've got a plan. It takes a lot of work from the beginning of the appointment to the end to go from the before to that beautiful after. I'm going to show you how we do that. Let's get started. So I have a guest with me, a very long life, well, your whole life. <laughs> She's half my age. Here's my guest, Laura. Hi, Laura. How are you? Good. So I do Laura's nails on a relatively regular basis. When I can't do them, if I'm out of town and stuff, she gets somebody else in my shop to do them. But um, So here we have this beautiful set that I did recently, and this is five weeks grown out. A little more than five weeks. Right. These are a long grown out. Now, hers don't grow super fast, so we only have, like some people get this at three weeks. Mm -hmm. Like Grant will get this at like two. Yeah. He's grow really fast. But this is great. This is something we can work with. So when a client first sits down, we want to be able to establish what do they want? What is the plan? What are we going to do to get where we want to go to get that beautiful after photo? So I know Laura enough to know what she does like. So when I see her appointment and name in the book, I've got an idea. Oh, she's coming in. Sometimes I'll say to a client, can you send me some photos? So this is can be really difficult if you're a tech, you, you get this. People bring in photos all the time and they show it to you. So go ahead. What do you got? Okay. So I found these three different photos. Okay. So there's the first one. Oh, wow. Yeah, those are gorgeous. So can I scroll to see more that you have more on here? Uh, we'll go back this okay. way and then this one. Oh, yeah. Those are beautiful. Okay, you got another one? I do. And this one. Great. So a picture really is worth a thousand words. But not every nail technician has every product available that everybody else has in the world when you get a photo like this. So I may not have all the products, but I can get an idea of what she likes from these photos. So that's why I'll tell a client to bring in some photos. So what are you guys getting from this? What I'm getting from this, she clearly likes the bright colors. Mm -hmm. She also loves the neon tones. You I like do. that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what else am I seeing here that all of these have in common? You love coffin. I do. Yeah, which I've known that about Laura. Sometimes I'm, I see something on here like, oh, no, I don't have that. And I get all uh, upset because I don't have that. And how do I break it to them? And But then I find out that, oh, that's not what they liked about it anyway. So sometime over the years, I've learned this. What do you like about this, sweetie? What What is your, what, are the, what stands out? Like this photo in particular, what do you like about that? I like the bright colors. And I do like that it's partially see-through. Ah, okay. So now I might be focusing on these uh, gems here. Oh, I'm, I don't have those gems or I don't have the piercings and I'm all upset about it. But when in fact, she just told me it's really the bright color she likes, the neon effect and the see-through aspect of it. So I can do all that. Okay. Some clients do want to take it right exactly from the design they see. They want it to look exactly like that. If you do have a client like that, or if you're like that yourself, send those pictures to your techs weeks, maybe days in advance at least, so they can get those products, even buy them online somewhere or go to the store and buy them so they're prepared. So Laura, in this case, I know what Laura likes. And I had a feeling you were going to show me pictures just like this. These are gorgeous. Great. Whoever did these works and will post their names, they, they're they absolutely beautiful. I love this. Okay, I'm going to take all those ideas that she has just showed me on her phone. Those are really cool. And I'm just going to incorporate something else that I've just got in. Now, I know Laura is pretty flexible and I know what she does. Like, i am got this new stuff in. Like, some people are calling it like spider gel or stringy gel. Okay. Uh, the company I'm using it from, it, they call it um, play gel. We're going to do a few things that even if we don't like it, we can rub it right off. Okay. But I have a feeling we've going to like it. So now we have a plan. Thanks to the photos, conversations, I figured what she wants. We have a plan. Okay, now let's get started with the demolition. Okay, so I call this demolition is because we are really gonna get rid of these. You can see how intense this color is, right? This has got to go. 
Now, I'm not going to do it on every finger. Some fingers I'm going to have see-through and some are going to be solid. The colors that I have that are going to be solid will cover right over top of that. So this color underneath isn't such a big deal. But I do want to create some of that see-through looks that I know she loves. And I think I'm going to do that with two or three of the fingers. So I got to put on my renovation gear. And we are going to, oh, it's upside down. <laughs> I've done this how many times in my life? I should know this. You think you know by now? <laughs> you think but... I would. Okay. Now, I don't wear a mask when I'm doing, like, my hand on the videos that I normally do, simply because it's just one or two nails that I'm doing and any other additional filing. We're sometimes doing it off camera. But in this case, I'm doing a lot of filing, um, and I'm going to do both hands, both sets for the final photo both sets, both hands for the final photo. So I will be doing a lot of finals. That's why I'm wearing a mask. It also covers up and it, it, it affects the sound a little bit, but I'm hoping you'll bear with me. Okay, so I am gonna do three of them, I think, see-through, so I'm gonna shorten them right down. Literally just gonna take them right off. So this one, I'll eliminate all the stuff. Now this one, I am gonna take off the free edge, but I'm going to leave the pink and I'm gonna do just the free edge will be see-through, right? They'll all be like that. But these solid ones, I'm gonna to have to remove all that product on there because with the see-throughness, I don't wanna be able to see through that product. You don't wanna see the old stuff anymore. I don't, yeah. So this, I can literally, actually, just... Bye-bye. Yeah, it's actually grown out enough that I can use what's under there as my free edge. So I'm filing up to this line. I'm going to use that for part of my design. I'm just going to get rid of this icky color. I'm pretty bored of it. Yeah, you do. You know, this was a really neat design when we did it originally, and it looked really mm. cool. But after five weeks, you get a little tired of it. I'm surprised you held out that long. For me, I could never live with this kind of bright color for that long a period of time. Okay, so this is going to be a bit of a process. I'm going to go ahead and file all these off. But you know my plan of my demolition, and that's what I'm going to do. This gives me a chance to show you about my new kit. And I have to thank so many people who have invested in me and supported me by purchasing my kit. And that was Joseph and Steph and Courtney and Robin and Gabrielle. I appreciate it. There's just some of the names of the people who have purchased them. So what I'm doing with this kit, I've got five excellent professional files. And I'm going to take my medium file and I am going to shape this up because I'm going to put a form on this and I'm going to extend that see-through end, but I'm going to use the nail that's already on there to sort of extend the nail plate. It's a really cool look. I don't want the whole nail clear is what I'm trying to say. So I'm just going to extend that a little bit so it looks really, really cool. Okay, so that's great. So this is where we are with this nail now. Now I'm gonna take off all the rest of the product. Lots of work there. Let's get going on that. Okay, we have completed the demolition section and now we're moving into building the strong foundation. Where, where did you go when I was filing away there? We did a lot of filing. We got a lot done, you guys. Well, you got something. Oh my goodness! Curry showed up with this. Holy cowzers! Oh, that, that's pretty. Oh, look at that! Look at that, Laura! Holy cow! Wow! Who's this from? Now I gotta look. Susie. Thank you for your love, time, and support. A million thanks from Nettie. This is the Poddle Girl. Aww. Oh, that's so sweet. These are gorgeous. Oh, are these like a baby orchid kind of thing? 
Do you know anything about flowers? I'm not a flower I person. just know gorgeous when I <laughs> yes. see it. Okay, well, Karaman, maybe I'll give that back to you and you could put it behind Laura there. All right. Thank you, Nettie. That was so sweet. Well, that was worth ruining a form over, I must say. That was completely worth it. Okay, so I got a little form stash here. So what I'm doing is I'm building out on, actually, we could do, I could show you that first. So I'm going to put in a pink color and I've got my clear because we're going to make, oh, I always have some paper towel because it's, um, so I don't ruin my towel. It catches all my product. And I've got my new brush. If you are one of the special people that bought my kit, I have a very special brush with my signature. Now this brush is just not any old brush. You can't just buy a cheaper brush to replace this brush. This is a very high quality brush and I've designed it with all the attributes that I love in a brush. And one of them is the bristles themselves. These are a very high quality bristle and it doesn't fluff, it keeps its shape. As long as you're keeping the shape of your brush and doing this, it will keep the shape every time you go. You, this will last you a long time. You just got to take care of it. When you do get your brush, though, those of you who did purchase, just make sure you gently take out all the packing powder that's in it before you disperse it into your monomer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is build the pink on a little bit because what I'm trying to create is the nail plate being one color and the free edge being completely clear so we can get that bright see-through color that Laura really likes. So I'm just going to fill in the nail, the natural nail there, and bring it right out to the free edge here, and then I'll shape it. Because of this being the free edge being see-through, I do want a very nice polished nail look. So the natural nail underneath it looks really clean and shaped. What kind of acrylic are you using? Oh, you sneaky devil, you. <laughs> I have some more surprises coming out. <laughs> so I'm just going to lay that in on all three of these ones that are going to be the see-through aspect of it. There's a little... Fuzzy. Yeah. Cat here. Uh, could be. That cat, he was here for the first part. He was doing a very good job directing. Now he's gone and we don't even know what to do now. Now that Critter's gone, we're lost. He leaves his mark though. <laughs> yeah, little hairs flying everywhere. I was just thinking about this room and how many different things it's been over <laughs> the years. We've been in this house for 28 years. Unbelievable. And Laura has been a part of them for 25. And yes, you're right. This room in particular that we are doing, that we're shooting this in, has been everything. It was my nail studio at one time, like my and my nail school at one point. And it was Karen Mann's uh, recording studio at one point. So we have built these out now, and now that they're dry, I am going to just do this little trick. Grab a great file, and I'm just going to smooth the edge a little bit. You don't have to do this. Because this design is kind of loose for that, we don't have to. But if I was being very, very specific and doing a French white or a black on the end or gray, I would definitely crisp these edges up. So I'm just going to nicely kind of file up these ends just so they're nice and shapely. So when we get that see-through look, we're going to see through to this. I just want it to look a little bit cleaned up and not messy. Okay, beautiful. Okay, and now I'm going to reform them. Now, you can get a little jiggy if you want to keep those forms and put them in under there, but you can also just use some new forms. So I'm going to just use some new ones. So I'm just going to put the clear right on top of this, and we're just going to build them right out to get them nice and long.
Okay, so now we're gonna build out the clear. Now, this particular being the index, I always make my index, make sure they're really nice and strong. Index fingers are the ones that if you're gonna wreck one on the right hand, if they're right-handed, or the left hand, they're, whatever their dominant hand is, they're the ones that are gonna break, crack, anything like that. So make sure that you make the apex nice and solid. Get a lot of strength in there. I don't mean super thick, right? Just because you want something stronger doesn't mean it has to be thicker all over. It can be thicker in certain spots, but not all over. Just where you want it to be strong. That's exactly right. And thicker in the world of nails is a very fine, fine line between too thick and not thick enough. So I'm just building out the free edge here to get that nice, clear nail. We're gonna stick with that coffin shape. are building a nail don't feel pressure to do that one ball method it's not important it's not something that people gauge you on your skill or not you can do it in 17 beads or one bead it doesn't matter just whatever suits you but don't feel pressure to try to feel like you have to keep up with some that are saying that they can do it in one bead Okay, now we've completed all of the shaping and building that strong foundation, and now I'm gonna shape and sculpt them, get them ready for decorations. Okay, so when you put your little brush away, just make sure you put the cap on it because it keeps it nice and non-crusty. All ready to go for your next one. And that's why I designed this cute little cardboard tub. So you can keep it for storing all of your files in your brush. So now we are going to file these up. Take the form, this best way to take the form off. We loosen the sides, then pinch the center, and then just bring it under. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly shape all these up and get them ready for the decorating. What do you do if a client comes in and they have a certain style that they like that you despise? Oh. Do you try to okay, talk so, them out of it? Yes. As horrible as that sounds, because you really want to do what the client wants. But that's a really great question if you're a nail technician and if you're a client, how you can't get what you want out of this nail technician. There is two designs I really absolutely despise. And if I do them, I feel they make me look bad. Mm -hmm. And the one design is when you do the French line, if it's down too far toward the cuticle. So like if you have your finger and the end is French, right? But if you do that French smile line too close toward the cuticle, and you got a giant white on the end, and it's like halfway up the nail, or if you don't curve it, if it goes more straight, like the French line more straight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know for the risk of sounding like a snob, I just hate that. I guess it's because for years I practiced to do that curve so good and so crisp and in the right spot. It makes a difference where it sits. To me, if it sits right in that arch point, a little bit on the side of the free edge, it looks more elegant. Mm -hmm. The closer it gets to the cuticle, it looks more dumb. I just don't like to look like a big toe or something. I don't know what it is, but I don't aesthetically like it. So when a client asks me to do it really close, I sort of split the difference so it doesn't look. But I get why the client's doing that because when it grows out, they don't want that big gap in between. I totally mm -hmm. get that. But then that's when I started mixing colors in the pink to make it a little bit more opaque to, so you don't see that see-through grow look, right? Mm -hmm. There's things you can do. The other one I hate. Oh, my goodness. Oh, hate is um, the flared nail. Now, I know that became a style for some and some might like it, but it's, I'm just gonna say there's nothing wrong with it per se. It's just aesthetically, I despise it. And a lot of nail technicians don't like it either. And there might be some that do, obviously there's some that are doing it, but 
it's kind of hard to because when you're doing that square look, it can even look a little flared, even though you didn't try to do that. So I totally get that. I think that's why that sort of tapered look kind of, there are so many looks that we're inventing now, which is awesome. But for me, I, sorry, I'm getting on a bit of a, I'm going nuts. But yeah, I don't like the flared look at all. Mm -hmm. And there is a way you can, you can still do it structurally sound and make it thin so it's not bulky, but just the shape that you're not, not a fan, a fan. Of. Not a fan, not at all. No, nope, no. Nope. As a nail tech, you want to please the client. You want to give them what they want. That's why we do the plan. We have to discuss what they want. And then sometimes you'll get clients who say, hey, just do whatever you want. Yeah. You're like, oh, <laughs> Okay, then. Yeah, then you can go there. Good question. Okay. And now we're going to start to decorate. This is the fun part. We're gonna decorate. I'm not gonna blindfold her because we're gonna have a collaborative effort on what we're gonna pick. I'd like to blindfold her because I got my own ideas. Again, getting to that, what do I do on a client? You gotta work with the client and get what they want. So I am actually using a bunch of different products today. I uh, sculpted with a different product and with doing the nail art, we're gonna use a few different nail products together. I'm not mixing them within one pot together, but I'm layering them so that's totally okay. I'm gonna do the base. I'm gonna do these two colors as solid. So I'm gonna do that right now. Sure. I'm using this Illuminex base and it is a silver. That, when we put the color on top, it's just, it's amazing, it's what it is. I like it, it's nice and thin. And the reason why that's important is when you're doing a shape, like coffin in particular, an almond, you really wanna preserve those shapes. If the gel polish is too thick, if you can lose a bit of your crisp edge, like an almond or square or um, coffin. And I hate that. Okay, we'll just let that go shiny. You let it go shiny before you nuke it, you get the full effect of it. See the thumb is so shiny? That's really cool. Isn't it's it? It's a mirror. mirror. Yeah, it basically is, isn't it? Okay. I think there, yeah, it's timed. Oh, you don't even know what goodness you're in for. Okay, so now it comes down to color. Let's talk about color. So look at this beauty. That's really pretty. I love that. So I do want to use three different colors. Okay, sure. Then there's this beauty. Oh, very similar. And then there's this one. Mm -hmm. I love this. This is really rich. It's like honey. Yeah. And this one. Ooh. I mean, there's lots of them. I just picked these ones. Mm -hmm. I like the blue. That the is blue's really cool. Okay, so if we're gonna pick three, what three do you like? The I'm gonna say blue, blue, this one, the amber, okay. and a red. The first red. Yeah, the first red. Okay. I like the green too. Yeah. The green? There was no green. Or this the one? yellow. Yellow. It's like yellow. a yellowy green. It is actually. <laughs> I like this yellow because it's more amber, more rich. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. No. But this, that's what we're going to do. They all look Okay. Nice. So now order. Maybe blue on the index, red here in the amber. Sure. Okay. Oh, this is gorgeous. And the reason why this is important because these are see-through and this nail I'm putting it on is see-through. Okay, oh, this is pretty. I might do two coats just to get the intensity of that beautiful blue. It's a really nice color. Mm. Nice, and then we're doing the red for the next one. Now the question is, which color do we put on the silver base? Which is your favorite colors you'd like to try? You can pick from the three we already have, or you can try something new. 
I don't mind having you get all different colors. 30 seconds. <laughs> Once you put these colors on the silver, it just illuminates. It just, mm-hmm. I guess that's why you call it Illuminix. It just pops. Right. So you can use any one of those on there. I don't know. What do you think? Oh, these are some of my favorite ones, so I can't go wrong with any of them. But I am going to do a second coat. Okay. So rich. Okay, nuke that again. Yeah. And now we gotta decide which ones do we want to pop off that silver. What you think? I don't know. Are we doing just one? Whatever you want. No, two. You get to choose two? two. So maybe eliminate your least favorite of these. If the red's in the middle, do the other two like opposite. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Put the blue on the yeah. pinky that's okay. furthest. Good decision. Okay, so watch this. I might do two coats of the blue on there. And what did we decide for the thumb? The amber. The amber. Leave the red in the middle. Gotcha. Okay, nuke that again. Cool. Now we did do the second coat on the other one, so we're gonna do the second coat on the pinky. And then we're gonna do, like some people call it spider gel, string gel, exclusive nail couture calls it play gel. Okay, I do find these uh, silver things annoying, but honestly with gel, you have to have it. Gel is, it creeps out of, I'm making a mess. Creams out of everywhere, so these silver things are really a must, but. Oh boy. Yeah, you can see the problematic situation here. It's stringy. It is it's very stringy. stringy. It's horrible. Okay, we're just gonna ignore it. There we go. Just ignore that happened. Mm-hmm. So the good news is we can wipe it off. We don't like you. We can wipe it off. I don't know what pattern I'm looking for. I haven't established any type of style of my own yet. That's okay. Let's just let's just swing it. Okay, so it's very stringy. I can see that. Well, there's one string. Yep. Interesting. Very interesting. If you dot it, will it allow you to continue yeah. to drag? You dot. Oh my goodness. That's, really, That's cool. really cool. You could make some pretty cool spider webs and stuff for Halloween. Perfect for Halloween. And dot it and go back down. <laughs> look at that. Oh, look, I grabbed a whole bunch of string. Oh, and I accidentally hit my nail on the other side. That is so cool. You can bend it a little. Oh, now I'm getting jiggy. There you go. Okay, I want some skinnier ones now. I don't. These are too fat, don't you think? The smaller ones do look nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is freaking cool. That's really cool. My idea. This was just fumbling and we we like it. I'm gonna take this design and try to do it from this upwards. Okay. Okay. So maybe I better have a start point. Oh, no, no, that didn't work. And I'm gonna just trail it off. Okay. You can, you can go around a corner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Drop the whole nail. Yes, 
Oh, that one's too fat. I don't like that. I like <laughs> thinner ones. That one's a little too thin. I can't even see it. Okay, so what should we do for this one? Hmm. From the bottom? Like, I don't know. Like the cuticle? Yeah. I don't know if that's going to make it really difficult for you. But... Well, because I'm a newbie, possibly. You're really pushing the... Okay, well, let's do the dot thing. Oh, I think you're saying that I could touch this dot all the time. Yeah, you might be able to get a few out of it. I can, but they don't go very far. Oh. Let me get one. That does look cool, though. Fat one, in there. one fat one. Could make a spider or a dragonfly or something out of it. <laughs> I kind of like the blobby black point. I just wish it was... Let me see if I can get more in there. Oh, it's so stringy. I can't separate it. <laughs> yeah, you see, that's what I want. I want to go down further. Almost looks a little bit like shattered glass. Yeah. Not so much with the black, but just the shape. That's so cool! You can get them in this particular company, which is Email Couture, in silver, white, and gold. Very cool. Okay, well, let's finish off that pinky. Oh, I'm drawing on my... Oh, that's a good move. <laughs> Ruining your own packaging. Yep. Yeah. Okay, let's do the pinky. I'm going to get better at this. Thank you for letting me experiment on you, Laura. Anytime. Well, depending on what your plan is. <laughs> depending on if you're going to make my nails look bad or not. Do you like that? Mm -hmm. Very different shapes, all of them. Yeah. And I will say, this is a very artistic, this is so mood based. I mean, I can see how different they look. Like, I, I love this one, but it doesn't almost match the other ones because I got a little bit thinner. I could almost take that off and do it again. But it's art. <gasps> wow. Okay. So, like, I did see one very clever nail technician. And I'm going to try this. Oh, this is getting kind of dirty. If I did find that if you do get anything on there that you don't like, just get some alcohol and just wipe it nice and clean. Like if I didn't like that index finger, we could literally just wipe it clean. I've got some, you know, little fur bits in there. So I'm just gonna make sure that's nice and clean before we continue. But I saw one person and I don't know if this is more of an advanced step and I'm not gonna be able to pull this off right now, but she, he, I'm not sure who it was, was going like, in almost like a bent fashion, like almost like circles. Okay. So let me try that. I always use the thumb as kind of the experimenting finger. Easier to hide. Well, it's not really a finger, but yes, it is. Okay, so they kind of went like, oh, I'm not getting as much. Kind of went like around and then turned the corner. Okay. But then they followed it like around and turned the corner. See, like that. Okay. Isn't that cool? That's very cool. You really can get jiggy. And then they would kind of go like this and then like that and then Make like that. kinds of shapes. Yeah. It's very cool. Neat, eh? It almost looks like a hanging necklace or something. Right. OK, 
Okay, I'll just do a few more. Okay, that is so much fun. Huh. Okay, so let's just nuke that and then we'll top coat it. Time to check out reveals. Go ahead. I love these products. If you guys are interested in any of them, we're gonna list them in the description box below. Laura, I love these. They're beautiful. Now pricing is something all part of the nail renovation. Pricing is so different all over the place from state to country to continents. It can be very different. And even just in your own neighborhood. I've noticed that. Yeah. Now this set in particular, because I removed three of the nails on each hand, I'm doing a partial removal. The other four I just filled because we were covering them with a solid color. I'm, I could give away nails for free because I just love doing it, but I can't pay my mortgage like that, just like every other nail technician. So we have to charge accordingly. And yes, of course, you can go to some places and get them really cheap, mm -hmm. but there is a quality difference with some of those. And having said that, I would probably charge, well, it's the nail fill plus three removed. Then I had to build them out. Mm -hmm. So then some salons will have a charge for per nail that's missing, but I missed it. <laughs> I got rid of it. But then again, we wanted it for this particular design because we wanted to see through. So that might be a $5 charge. So you could do, let's say if you're charging $50 for a set, uh, a nail fill set this is. I charge about $70, $75 for a nail set, nail fill, pardon me. And then I would charge maybe $5 for every nail that I took off and then replaced. Sometimes I won't charge for the removal, just the new nail. So in three nails, or six nails, I guess, that's $30 on top of it. So we're up to about 105 okay. Then you can charge for the gel polish. Some places charge anywhere between $5 to $25 or even more for a gel polish application. So you've got 105 Let's say we're going to charge 10 bring it to 115 okay. And then we could say we're going to do a charge for the nail art. Some places might charge maybe $5 for that nail art. Mm -hmm. So we're up to about 120 okay. That's it. That's what I would probably charge, about $120 for this set. That's a complete set. Yep. These are great. I love them. I do too. Okay. Well, thank you, Laura, once again for hanging out with me and let me do your nails. And I think we discovered a beautiful design. And you can see that it's not very difficult to do. Thank you for joining me, you guys. And thank you, Laura. Okay. Catch you guys in the next video. Hey.